you're still 90 kilos, albeit with 80% strength, but the body composition is going to be different. Vigor Steve here, back with the Vigorous Q&A, answering all of your bodybuilding related questions. Today's question is from Alejandro Consuegra. Mas? No mas? Mierda. Okay, his question is, best ways, or is it possible, to maintain gains naturally after a cycle that's not super suppressive? Let's say testosterone and anivar. Well, I hate to break your bubble and your dreams. All exogenous hormones are going to be the suppressive, but you have to keep in mind that the total dose and the exposure duration determines how aggressive your post-cycle therapy needs to be. So if you do a TRT dose of testosterone and a low dose of anivar, like I preached in the previous video discussing which oral steroid is actually worth it or not, and trust me, there's many more oral steroids that we can discuss after that video. So if you do a low dose, you'll, you're going to be suppressed, but the negative effect that you'll experience on the hypothalamus and pituitary and the clearance time afterwards, after you stop your testosterone and anivar, is going to minimize your PCT compared to running a high dose of testosterone with a high dose of anivar for years in duration, which requires a much more extensive PCT. Now, again, you're going to build a lot more muscle and a higher dose for a longer period of time. And it's the overall point at which you end your cycle, the amount of strength that you gained, the amount of muscle mass that you gained, and how you look cosmetically, that's going to determine how much you'll be able to sustain after you've come off cycle. And the further you get away from your natural potential, the harder it is going to be to sustain it. So let's take two different situations here as a comparison point. And while you're at it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing. If you haven't already, hit the notification bell button so you can get notified whenever a new vigorous Q&A video drops. Forgot to mention at the beginning, but here we are begging for those likes. Two different situations. You go on a low dose cycle for a short period of time, and you go on a high dose cycle for a very long period of time. You maybe do blasting and cruising in between, right? To stay on top of your health. At a single cycle, let's say you built five kilos, 10 pounds of muscle mass as an arbitrary example, and the other one you gain 30 pounds, maybe 40 or 50 pounds even. The duration of these two cycles is significantly different. So let's say, let's say you start at the age of 26, your serum testosterone levels are about 800 nanograms per deciliter, hopefully, but in many cases nowadays, serum testosterone levels are way lower. That's why people resort to testosterone and perhaps other anabolic energetic steroids or selective androgen receptor modulators on top. But in an ideal situation, your serum testosterone is somewhat favorable. You go on cycle, you go with a low dose, you maybe double or triple your serum testosterone levels and you add some anivar on top you are suppressed for let's say 13 weeks, 16 weeks, and you do your post-cycle therapy properly. I already made a very detailed video about post-cycle therapy and how to do that correctly. I'll link it at the end of this one. You stop your exogenous administrations, you let your testosterone and oxandrol levels come down to undetectable levels. Now you're clinically androgen deficient. You start your human chorionic gonadotropin therapy followed by selective estrogen receptor modulators. And then you can select between tamoxifen or roloxifen, for example, or enclomiphene or clomiphene. Highly depends on what you can get and what your ultimate goals are going to be during PCT and afterwards, right? If you need to resolve a little bit of gynecomastia, it might be better to go with roloxifene instead of tamoxifen. And if you suffer from severe estrogen-like side effects when you take clomiphene, it might be better to take enclomiphene. All right, I discuss all of that in that video. You do your post psychotherapy, your serum testosterone levels come back to pretty identical levels as you had before you did your first cycle or before you did any cycle that's moderate and shorter in duration. You build five kilos, give or take, on cycle. You should be able to sustain about 80% of that. But it will look significantly different from a cosmetic appearance. And again, the 80% size that you have Partially is glycogen retention, partially nitrogen retention, partially electrolyte retention. Of course, this is going to make you look softer because the skeletal muscle is no longer fully saturated because of the lack of androgens at which this additional skeletal muscle was built. 
And whether that's hypertrophy or hyperplasia, the skeletal muscle that you've now built on cycle is going to deflate, making you look soft when you're off cycle. Now, even though the muscle mass technically is still there, and if you can sustain, let's say, 75 or 80% of your strength, your maximum strength that you had on this moderate cycle, you should be able to look about 80% of what you looked previously. 80% strength, 80% cosmetic appearance, albeit softer and a little bit more flabby. Again, because the skin is now a little bit stretched, albeit that it will retract over time. And you're probably going to get fat during your post-cycle therapy. And the funny thing is, in this example, the body weight is probably going to stay the same. So let's say you ended up at 90 kilos on cycle. You do your post-cycle therapy. You come off. You restore your endogenous testosterone production. You're still 90 kilos, albeit with 80% strength. But the body composition is going to be different. Let's say you were 10% on cycle. Now you're 12 to 15%. Again, most people get fat during a post-cycle therapy because... Post-cycle therapy makes you hungry because you're missing out on this super physiological dose of testosterone that you were on and perhaps other compounds on top. And you're going through this androgen deficient state. Most people would get incredibly hungry. Of course, your metabolism is going to take a beating during this time. And the way uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators make you feel is also not very pleasant. Plus, human chorionic gonadotropin interacts with the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor and thus might increase metabolism by increasing the production of thyroxine T4. So there is a period where you're going to be hungry, you're going to eat more food than you probably require to sustain your strength and your size, resulting you in getting fat. So the body weight might stay the same, but the body composition is drastically different. And honestly, if you don't eat in a little bit of a surplus during post-cycle therapy, in most cases, the post-cycle therapy is not going to be productive and successful with a good outcome, restoring your testosterone to comparable levels where they were before going on cycle. And this way, you're also able to sustain more strength. Now, this is in the short-term context. As for the other example, where you're using performance-enhancing drugs for years, a decade, or maybe even decades, once you come off and all of the exogenous performance-enhancing drugs have metabolized from your system, you'll be lucky to sustain 75% of it. And the longer you stay off, the more you're going to fall back to the baseline that you had very close to your natural potential. Now, you'll be able to sustain more muscle mass than your natural potential because your micronuclei have changed. You've created hypertrophy. You've created hyperplasia. There's now more muscle cells present. But the downside of that is because you were using steroids for such a long time, maybe at the age of 26, when you started cycling, your serum testosterone levels were, let's say, 800 nanograms per deciliter. And now 10 years later, they're only 400 nanograms per deciliter. If that, assuming that you recovered to a certain extent after doing a PCT properly, your serum testosterone levels are now half, or maybe they're 75% of what they were, but you have a lot more skeletal muscle that needs to be sustained with this reduced amount of serum testosterone. You have more androgen receptors, more skeletal muscle, but less testosterone. How badly do you think that's going to deflate? But honestly, it highly depends on the time frame in which you're off. The longer you're off, the worse you're going to look. And eventually that will baseline around a little bit higher than your natural potential. More strength, more muscle mass, um, obviously a worse cosmetic appearance probably than you had when you were drug free again because serum testosterone levels are lower and the muscle mass that you need to sustain is higher we can take myself as an example I'm just off cycle for three months now I wanted to do ACG monotherapy my ACG turned out to be bunk so now I'm using Gorilla Mind Sigma which is an over-the-counter test booster I do feel significantly better than I did four weeks ago but I haven't done follow-up blood work yet I started with, what, 230 nanograms per deciliter after the ACG monotherapy experiment failed. I feel that I've doubled those testosterone levels, but again, I will have to do blood work this Sunday. So stay tuned for an update video about Gorilla Mind Sigma and how it's hopefully improved my sex hormone and neurosteroid panel. And that video will be up next week. For now, I'm about 75%, 80% of the strength that I had at my max on cycle, but it's not anywhere close that I had two years ago when I was blasting my socks off.
we can make a small and easy comparison. This, this is what I look like right now. And I'll overlay a video of what I looked like three months ago when I'm still on 600 milligrams anabolic energetic steroids combined per week. Now, it's not a super hefty cycle, but I'm sure you guys can see the difference from a couple weeks ago compared to now. This is three months after the last administration or three and a half months after the last administration. If I were to continue with the Gorilla Mind Sigma or maybe go back to ACG monotherapy and rely on endogenous testosterone production, I'm probably going to end up around, let's say, give it, give it another nine months. I think I'll end up at 60, 75% strength. I still feel that my strength is declining. I feel that my motivation is getting less also. I feel that my metabolism is not as favorable as it was when I was using performance enhancing drugs, which is, well, to be expected because you're literally supercharging your body for anabolism. And even though I'm very diligent with my diet, eating a little bit more on Sunday puts on the body fat. So my body composition has changed for the worst. Um, that's why I want to do a transformation next week because, well, it's about that their time to get back into shape. But if I were to continue with this trajectory, just rely on Gorilla Mind Sigma or ACG monotherapy, I think I would end up about 60, 70% of what I used to be after 12 years of taking performance enhancing drugs. Now, this is still 25% better than my natural potential, albeit softer and a little bit more flabby because I also got 12 years, 13 years older in the meantime compared to my peaked natural physique. So I hope that answers your question. You can sustain some of it, but not all of it. Before you ask, I don't think it's a good idea to take performance enhancing drugs, go on cycle to reach your natural potential, then come off and sustain it. I think that's a horrible idea. Just be patient, build your way up. Because really guys, once you open up Pandora's box, there's no going back. And I'll leave you with this idea. There are several drug tested federations out there where they want athletes that used to take performance enhancing drugs to be clean for five to seven years, depending on the federation. So if you truly want to see how much muscle mass you can sustain after coming off cycle, let's say you would need to wait five to seven years to really see how much of this muscle mass that you've built on cycle you were able to sustain seven years later. And I don't think that most people are going to stay off for that long once Pandora's box has been opened. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. 75 to 80% front double bicep for the Vigorous crew. Don't worry. The 100% front double bicep is going to make a comeback relatively soon. The next Vigorous Q&A will be on my Instagram page over the weekend. So if you have further questions, post them over the weekend. And if it's a good question worthy of a video, I will record the answer posted here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.